Are you ready to meet the unique genius of music? Freddie Mercury is an unforgettable artist who has etched his name not only in the history of music, but also in our hearts. His unique voice and charisma on stage made him a boundary-pushing artist. Are you ready for this unique musical journey? Get ready to discover the life of Freddie Mercury and enter the fascinating world of Queen's legendary music. If you are ready with your coffee and in front of your screens, here we go. Born on September 5, 1946, in the Sultanate of Zanzibar to Bomi Bulsara of Persian descent and Jer Bulsana of Zanzibar Indian descent, his parents named him Farah Bulsara. His family practiced Zoroastrianism. Farah spent most of his childhood in India with his grandmother and aunt, and in 1954, he began studying at St. Peter's boarding school. Farouk became a table tennis champion in 1956 and won the Junior Ozen All-Rounder Award in cricket in 1958. At St. Peter's, an English school, Farouk's teachers and classmates started calling him Freddy because of the difficulty in pronouncing his name. In addition to his athletic achievements, Farouk learned to play the piano at St. Peter's. It was here that he joined the Hectics for his first band experience. After finishing his studies, he returned to his family in Zanzibar. In 1964, due to the revolution in Zanzibar, he moved to the UK with his family at a young age. After completing his education in India, Freddie moved to London in 1964 to study graphic design at Ealing Art College. During his studies, his interest in music grew. He sang in various groups. In 1969, his flatmate Tim Staffel had a band called Smile. When Tim left Smile to play in another band, Freddie convinced the other members of the band, Brian May and Roger Taylor, and they started playing music together. John Deacon later joined the band, and the band Smile was replaced by Queen. Freddie himself designed the logo for the newly formed band. First, let's talk about the intricately drawn figures, five of which stand out and reflect the band members' zodiac signs. The two lions represent John Deacon and Roger Taylor, the crab represents Brian May, and the two fairies represent Freddie Mercury, a Virgo. All the characters are arranged around the letter Q with a crown in the middle of the logo, as if they are holding it, hugging it, and watching it. Above them all, a phoenix rises from the flames and takes all the other figures under its wings as if to protect them. Throughout the 1970s, Queen rose rapidly with their impressive vocal performances and experimental approach to music. Queen released their first album in 1973. Their first album was released under the name Queen. After a great debut with their first album, Queen released their second album in 1974 as Queen 2. The spectacular rise of Freddie and his friends had begun. They also released Sheer Heart Attack in the same year. In 1975, they released A Night at the Opera. In 1976, A Day at the Races. In 1977, News of the World. And in 1978, Jazz. If you're having trouble identifying the album names, here's how we can help. Bohemian Rhapsody. We Will Rock You. Love of My Life. You're My Best Friend. We're the champions. They managed to stay in our heads and turn the markets upside down. Don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends so we can reach more people, even if we don't turn the market upside down. In 1975, Kenny Everett, an important radio programmer of the time, invited Freddie Mercury to his program, Capital London Breakfast Show. Freddie brought along the song Bohemian Rhapsody, which he had written himself but which had not yet been released. Kenny Everett was very impressed when he heard the song on the turntable, but he couldn't release it because Capital Radio hadn't officially accepted the song. Kenny just had to enjoy being one of the first to hear it. On the air, he told his listeners that it was a song he admired but couldn't share and got them excited. Then Kenny played the song live on the radio and said, Oops, my finger must have slipped. Afterwards, the radio station's phone was flooded with calls from listeners wanting to know when the song would be released. 
Bohemian Rhapsody spent nine weeks at the top of the UK singles chart, and the album sold over one million copies. In 1970, Mary Austin came into Freddie's life. Freddie had a long relationship with Mary Austin for six years. Many of Freddie's songs that we all know were written for Mary Austin. In 1976, their relationship ended after Freddie came out as bisexual, but their friendship always continued. The strong bond between them was never broken. Freddie never hid his sexual orientation. He wanted to break all the taboos by taking a really big stand with his self-confidence for that time. Although his self-confidence was shaken many times throughout his life because of his teeth, he never had his teeth done. He was afraid that any procedure would affect his voice, so he was not in favor of the idea. It really wasn't a risk you could take, because the range of Freddie's voice was four octaves. Freddie was a baritone when he spoke and a tenor when he sang. We thank him for not taking the risk of ruining this perfect voice because of his physical characteristics, even years later. From the early 1980s, she began to experience various relationships. He had many male partners during this time. Freddie found a good balance between his career and his personal life. In 1985, he met Jim Hutton from Ireland. Jim had a lasting influence on Freddie's life. In 1980, he released the album The Game. The album Flash Gordon was also released in the same year. The rapid rise of Queen continued. After a two-year break, the album Hot Space was released. In 1983, Queen recorded three tracks in Michael Jackson's studio, in addition to the albums he was releasing with his band. But these tracks were not released at that time. In 1985, he released his first solo album, Mr. Bad Guy. In 1986, the album A Kind of Magic was released. In 1988, his second solo album, Barcelona, was released. This album was quite different from the albums they released both solo and with Queen. This album, which she released with opera singer Montserrat Cabal, combining popular music and opera, is very special. After the solo album, they managed to make an impact all over the world with their album The Miracle in 1989. Queen's concerts were as successful as their albums, Queen met their audience in about 700 concerts. Held in huge stadiums, Freddie was able to attract attention with his stage performances and the way he interacted with his fans. Theatrical stage performances with the audience were the most important features of their success. On July 13, 1985, he participated in the organization of Live Aid by the group Queen. The concert in Wembley Stadium was the biggest live performance in the history of rock music. 72,000 people participated, and 2 billion people watched the event. Live Aid was also important for Freddie to reconcile with his parents, with whom he had a bad relationship. In the meeting with his mother before the concert, he says goodbye, leaving all the resentments behind, and tells his mother that he will definitely watch the concert and send her a kiss. The address of the kiss he sends to thousands of people while singing Bohemian Rhapsody is actually only his mother. On August 9th, 1986, Queen met more than 120,000 fans at Nebworth Park. This concert is very important not only because of the number of attendees, but also because it was Freddie Mercury's last concert with Queen. Freddie Mercury was tested for HIV in October 1986. Freddie announced in many interviews that his HIV test was negative, but Freddie started to raise awareness about HIV and started to make aid campaigns. His biggest supporter in this regard is Princess Diana, one of his close friends. Diana is the biggest supporter of the National AIDS Fund. Freddie's weakened photos in the press and the fact that he didn't go on tour were not found very convincing in the press, despite Freddie's negative statement. In February 1990, he was on stage with Queen at London's Dominion Theatre to receive the Brit Award for his contribution to British music. Pictures of Freddie on stage further fueled rumours of his illness. In 1991, he appeared in front of the cameras for the last time for the song These Are the Days of Our Lives from the album Innuendo. The images in the clip foreshadowed the progression of his health problems. In June 1991, 
Freddie Mercury announced that he was ending his work with Queen. He moved to his home in West London, where he lived in seclusion and retired. On November 22, 1991, he called Queen's manager Jim Beach to his home and gave a press statement. In the press release, he finally put an end to the AIDS debates that had been going on for years. Freddie admitted that he had AIDS. He died at home about 24 hours after the press release. Freddie was 45 years old when he closed his eyes for the last time. The cause of death was pneumonia due to AIDS. With him when he died were Jim Hutton and Mary Austin, who he never gave up on. These two friends had never left Freddie alone in his life and were with him on this sad day. We have already mentioned that Freddie Mercury's real name was Farouk Bulsara. His father was Persian and his family was Zoroastrian. Freddie's funeral was also conducted by a Zoroastrian cleric. As Freddie's coffin was carried into the hall, Aretha Franklin's Precious Lord, Take My Hand was played. After a one minute intermission, Carol King's You've Got a Friend was played. Finally, his favorite aria, D'Amour Sul Ali Rose was played, composed by Giuseppe Verdi and sung by Montserrat Caballe, who performed with Mercury on his 1980s solo album. After the service, Freddie Mercury's body was cremated according to his will, and his ashes were given to Mary Austin. Only Mary Austin knows where the ashes are buried, and she does not share this information with anyone. Freddie's symbolic tombstone is inscribed with his real name, Farrakh Bulsara. Under the dates of his birth and death, it reads, I will always be close to you with my love, M. It is said that the letter M is Mary Austin, whom he never gave up. Freddie Mercury left part of his fortune and his house to Mary. Mary Austin continues to live in the house with Freddie's belongings and memories. Freddie Mercury remains in the hearts of his fans, even after his death. In 2005, readers of Blender magazine voted Freddie the best male artist of all time. Rolling Stone magazine ranked him number 18 on the 100 Greatest Singers of All Time list. In 2009, he was voted the best rock artist of all time in a poll conducted by Classic Rock magazine. In the same year, Freddie Mercury was named the God of Rock in a very large poll conducted by One Poll. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Share your thoughts and ideas about the video in the comments section. Let us know who you would like to hear from in the coming weeks. You can also turn on notifications to be notified of more content and be a part of our community. See you in the next video.